secretive creator uh, who turns it over to a um, you know head developer who's you know very savvy with these sorts of things. Um, <laughs> what is uh, wh wh okay? I mean, we've got Bitcoin. Why have another cryptocurrency? There's thousands of these things, and most of them are just rehashes of Bitcoin, right? Yeah, the, the vast majority of them are just like somebody went to the Bitcoin repos a code repository and clicked the clone or the fork button and then changed a couple of things and went, oh, look, I've created my own cryptocurrency. Are you talking about Litecoin uh, specifically? A bunch of no, them. No, like that. all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is kind of it's, it's kind of disappointing because they, it ends up being in a sort of extreme lack of innovation and just more of the same click and clone. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's kind of I mean I've been involved with uh, with cryptocurrencies and with Bitcoin in particular obviously since early 2011 and the thing that excited me about Monero was the fact that it wasn't based on Bitcoin's code it was fresh code which meant fresh challenges but also um, a, a different approach to things and that was to me at any rate like really interesting uh, and the fact that it that it it did stuff that Bitcoin didn't do. Um, the fact that transactions were untraceable and unlinkable was exciting to me. Yeah, that was kind of what we were told Bitcoin was going to be uh, initially. It was going to be this pseudonymous currency, I think is the terminology that, that was well, used. pseudonymous is not anonymity. No, it's, it's not. the same thing. So with Bitcoin, for listeners who don't know, it's a decentralized uh, currency that sort of like Monero was issued by this mysterious person calling themselves Satoshi Nakamoto, and one of the things with Bitcoin is it's completely visible. There's this pu public ledger called the blockchain. So every right. transaction that has ever occurred on the Bitcoin network over the seven years that it has been in existence is viewable by anyone who knows a Bitcoin address to go and look at. So if I were to give you my Bitcoin address and I use it for more than one person, then you can look at all the transactions that have ever occurred. And to some extent, that's a feature of Bitcoin, being able to sort of publicly audit uh, the things that have gone on. Uh, now you're talking about a currency, Monero, that doesn't have the ability to to look at transactions, right? How do you know for sure when something has happened? So you can still look at transactions. Uh, the, the, the magic trick is that you look at a transaction and the inputs appear to come from a number of different transactions. So, you know, one particular transaction appears to come from, say, you know, five or ten different transactions. And you can't tell which of those transactions it actually came from. But there's a special little bit of cryptography that prevents people from spending uh, the same piece of money twice. Now, of course, uh, we do have to keep things as general as we can in this conversation. So I appreciate your ability to, uh, to do that thus far, uh, because we do have a general audience listening to the show who probably many of them have not even heard of Bitcoin, let alone uh, the idea of Monero. Certainly our long term listeners have. But anybody who's just tuning in tonight, I always have to remember when you're on the radio, somebody's getting in their car at the airport, turning it on and they're hearing hearing us talk about this anonymous uh, cryptocurrency. Now, Monero isn't the first anonymous cryptocurrency on the scene, or was it? Because there's a couple, at least a couple others out there who claim anonymity with their transactions. Yeah, I remember, right? some, I remember Dash yeah, is one Dark of them. Coin, Zero Coin. Um, and then uh, there was another one that I'm, uh, whose name I'm forgetting at this moment. Cause yeah, I, I think a non-coin a non was probably the first uh, separate cryptocurrency to say, oh, hey, let's try and do some sense of privacy. Right. And so uh, so we've moved from the idea of having completely visible blockchain, that, which is the, the name for the technology that's sort of behind many of these cryptocurrencies. Is there a blockchain with, with Monero? Yes, there is a blockchain. And like with Bitcoin, you can go to a blockchain explorer and look at transactions. You just can't figure out where they come from um, or where they're going to. Can you see whether they're fulfilled? Um, so, for instance, if, uh, I don't know, you're, you want to see whether a payment's been made? Yeah, you can see like okay, it was it went into a block like twenty minutes ago, and so I'm expecting it to appear in my wallet. But you can't see any more detail other than that. And what's one of the complaints about Bitcoin is the long confirmation times. When uh, you send Bitcoin to somebody, it sometimes it usually shows fairly instantly that oh hey, this you know this Bitcoin is coming in. 
But it's not until 20 plus minutes later that it has one or two confirmations, which means that the miners on the Bitcoin network are verifying the, you know, the, the soundness or the cryptographic validity or whatever of those transactions that, you know, verifying that essentially they're, uh, they're real, they're legit, they haven't been duplicated and, and things like that. Um, what's the time frame that it takes to send some Monero from one person to another? So, so for your first confirmation to come in, it's going to take about two minutes. But that's, I mean, as with Bitcoin, that, that first confirmation of Bitcoin, which takes 10 minutes or so, mm. is roughly the equivalent of five uh, or, yeah, five Monero confirmations. Um, I mean, it takes the network a certain amount of time to fulfill um, sort of some, some sort of cryptographic security. So you can go, well, this transaction is roughly reliable. It's not going to be reversed by somebody who's really clever and some 15 year old kid in his garage you're right those darn 15 year old kids in the garage um so why not uh, i guess what are the benefits of monero over bitcoin why not just stick with bitcoin i mean you know you've got this thing that works i i tend to tell people to stick to bitcoin because it's uh, you know it's much easier to use mm -hmm. um if you want to Bitcoin use Bitcoin was hard to if use you, back in you, the day. I mean, yeah, it was. I, and, I, and we too like, started in 2011, uh, and <laughs> the only thing you could buy with it were like Alapaca socks and uh, VPN services. Yeah, and you had to have the core wallet, and there wasn't anything else besides that, basically. And there was uh, Girls Gone Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, so so we're roughly the same now. We just don't have the Girls Gone Monero or Alapaca socks. We're not uh, cool. It'll start to tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So now, look, if, uh, if there's, there's reason to use Monero for a certain subset of people that enjoy financial privacy and mm -hmm. want to, like, really maximize their financial privacy. And I do believe that that um, more and more people are becoming aware of, of the importance of financial privacy and they will sort of tend towards um, Bitcoin and then also by extension Monero. Um, but I mean, I don't. I don't think Monero is trying to position itself to um, replace or even compete with Bitcoin. It's just an alternative that provides a different set of functions and and you know, right? That makes uh, sense. Uh, that sort of better uh, privacy enhancing stuff. The uh, for those that uh, you know may not be familiar with Monero, it is rising. It's risen up the charts very recently with uh, very. Uh, big news about some of the darknet marketplaces accepting it for transactions, which may have pushed the price of Monero like to quadruple uh, in the last few weeks here. Uh, so it's really jumped up quite a bit. Um, you know, I guess what's your vision for the future? Are you, you guys are working on a, a GUI for this thing because one of the the challenges I think to get getting into Monero for the average person right now, or even for somebody who's you know, familiar with cryptocurrency is that there aren't exactly a bunch of options for wallets for people to actually easily get this. And I want to hear maybe if can you stick with us and maybe talk a little bit more about how sure. someone can can get into this. Ricardo Spagni is with us here. He's actually calling us from South Africa. Sounds great over uh, Skype here. More on the way. If you've got a question about Monero, 855-450-FREE is our number. This is Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. Will the government protect your family from Iran and North Korea's newest weapon, EMP? 
We buy guns to protect ourselves, home, health, and car insurance for accidents. Maybe you also have food storage. But how would you keep your refrigerator running in a long-term EMP blackout? Using tested military designs, the Solark EMP-hardened solar generator protects and powers your critical appliances for years without burying items underground or wrapping them in aluminum foil. Unlike other preps, Solark is used every day to help offset your electric bill automatically. Visit PortableSolarLLC.com to learn how easily expandable the system is. Solark is the most affordable and powerful solution on the market. The whole system even fits in the back of a pickup or SUV and can install in less than an hour. See for yourself why Solark beats other off-grid systems at PortableSolarLLC.com. Don't wait for the government. Go to PortableSolarLLC.com to learn why Solark is energy insurance for your family. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, and your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. For years, LRN.FM has had a listen line that you can call and listen to LRN.FM anytime. Now we're taking the idea to a new level with the LRN.FM audio on demand line. You can call 641-793-9660 anytime and listen to LRN.FM's live feed. And you can listen to a bunch of our original shows on demand. Long distance fees may apply. Just dial 641-793-9660 and choose from the menu. 641-793-9660. Arcade City is a ride-sharing app built by drivers, not a mega corporation. As a driver with Arcade City, you can keep all of what you earn. Sign up now to drive for or ride with Arcade City at arcade.freetalklive.com. Arcade City is connecting drivers directly with riders and has been making headlines for disrupting the ride-sharing industry. Sign up now at arcade.freetalklive.com. That's arcade.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here Although, if you get a question for the lead developer of Monero, he's on the line with us here, Ricardo Spagni, uh, calling us from South Africa. We're going to get right back to him, but I also want to let you know uh, we are talking about cryptocurrencies to start out this show. But, of course, we'll take your calls about anything here in a little bit. But if you do have Bitcoin, we want you to download the official wallet of Free Talk Live. It's called Jax, and you can get it at jaxx.io. I don't know if they have plans to add Monero, but I would like to see that happen. I hope that uh, will happen. They did add Dash recently to Jax. You can have uh, your Dash wallet hold Bitcoin, Ether, as well as Dash. Uh, there are three different types of uh, cryptocurrencies. And there's even a shapeshift integration built right in. So if you want to change your Bitcoin into Ether or vice versa, you can easily do that without even having to leave the wallet software. So it's Jax, J A X X dot I O, created by Anthony Diorio. He's the founder or one of the founders of Ethereum. And he's also a Free Talk Live listener. It's easy to back up your wallet and recover funds with Jackson. They're striving to give you command over your digital life. Coins, contracts, currencies, identity, and more. It's your digital command center in the palm of your hand. Jax, the official wallet of Free Talk Live at J-A-X-X dot I-O. And it's cross-platform, which is nice. So you can get it on your smartphone, your Windows, your Linux, your Mac uh, desktop or laptop, or even browser plugins. For Chrome and Firefox. It's Ian and Mark in the studio with you here tonight. Uh, Ricardo Spagni is with us from South Africa. He is one of the head developers of Monero, which is, a, to me, a, a cryptocurrency that shows a lot of promise. I mean, it was uh, 
actually developed sort of separately from Bitcoin, obviously inspired by Bitcoin. It does have a blockchain. It does have a, a ledger of balances and transactions. But to some extent, there's, some, there's quite a bit of obscurity in there that you say this is a truly anonymous currency. Is that right, Ricardo? Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, it, it's not uh, it, truly anonymous from a cryptographic perspective. Is kind of a, a weird technical term, mm -hmm. but it's about as anonymous as we're going to get um, without needing to spend a minute to create a transaction on a fast computer. I see. And so this thing has really taken off recently. I was going to just kind of talk about my experience so far. One of the, you know, if I have a, cri a critique of Monero, I like the concept. But the implementation for the average user is just not, you know, it's not there yet. We're still pretty early on uh, in this process. There is a web wallet called MyMonero. Yeah, MyMonero.com. Yeah. So when you go to GetMonero.org, which is the official Monero website, GetMonero.org, I think .com also forwards you uh, to the same site, but GetMonero.org, yeah. it recommends uh, just a few different things. There's this MyMonero web wallet. Uh, there's also... Uh, Let's see, what else is there? The official wallet of Monero, which is currently not a GUI, meaning not a graphical user interface. There's a GUI sort of component called they Light use that Wallet. A GUI, is that another term yeah. they use? There's a, there's a GUI component called Light Wallet that se seems to interact with the official software. Um, so I, you know, I could learn command line stuff if I wanted to. I have the capability to do that. But for me, it's just like, uh, if I've got to jump through too many hoops... I'm not going to want to do it. So what's the development like as far as how's it coming along to make Where's this a little, gooey wallet? Uh, yeah, a little <laughs> more accessible for folks? <laughs> okay, so, so I, like, we started uh, developing a GUI wallet in 2014. And then the network was attacked um, mm -hmm. in September 2014. Quite a sophisticated attack by somebody who had studied the code. Okay. And that kind of made us take a step back and go, well... Maybe instead of developing like you know the fancy frilly stuff, maybe we need to go back to the fundamentals and just make sure it works well and it's secure. That sounds and good. So that's what we've been doing for like the past two years. Okay. So so now we're at a point where like okay, it's now working well. So now we can go back to the GUI you started developing two years ago and make that thing work as well. So that's been like the past sort of six months or so. There, um, there are a couple of guys. One guy in particular um, who's been plugging away at it and, and getting that going. So we're we're slowly getting to a point where um, where things are are becoming more usable. And I mean, like the guys from Jax and the guys from Exodus.io, um, they're super excited about Monero, and we're trying to uh, help them add Monero support to Jax and and okay, to great. Exodus. And uh, and it's coming, you know. I mean, it's um, like th this recent influx of interest in Monero has kind of taken us aback because we weren't expecting it. Oh yeah, um, surprise! Someone, <laughs> yeah, surprise. the market values your your currency. That's, yeah. you know, it's a nice thing. Better to, get to work. To have happen. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> and and it's interesting that it's so valuable yeah. already in this sort of early stage. It has really kind of jumped out. Um, arguably due to the darknet markets, adding it as uh, something that people yeah. can use. And that's the question I want to ask, Ricardo. So, um, you know, you've, you've managed to uh, uh, get yourself, um, you know, popular in, on the darknet, which is kind of like Johnny Cash, right, running around and uh, doing shows in prisons. Um, I mean, yeah. you know, why, why is it that uh, you've got privacy included? I mean, um, you know, darknets aren't known for their, the greatest of activities. Why is privacy important? So for, from our perspective, we don't, uh, we're building tools. We're writing software. We're not like designing use cases. What we care about is basic privacy. If somebody sends uh, money to you and like to your bank account, they shouldn't be able to see your balance. And that to me is at, at its core, the most fundamental um, uh, need for, when it comes to financial privacy. I don't really want somebody who sends me a payment to be able to go, oh, wow, this guy has a lot of money. Now let me go like knock on his door and like, you know, threaten him and get his private keys or whatever. He shouldn't be able to tell how much money I've got in my bank account. Yep, and that is one of the flaws for, of, uh, of Bitcoin. Yeah, the, the same goes for cryptocurrency. Nobody should be able to tell how much I hold or where it's stashed or anything like that. And they shouldn't know what I'm spending it on. I mean, these are basic, basic rights. These are not even 
complex things or, you know, is this morally correct or incorrect? It's basically, can somebody tell how much money I've gotten, what I'm spending it on? The end. I love it. I mean, I love the idea of, uh, of financial privacy. I think it, it, it definitely has its place, and the market is, is speaking. It's currently the number five uh, currency in the world. Yeah, one thing cap that I, owe. I didn't foresee with Bitcoin is, is that I'm sure that uh, some organization, and likely that organization's pretty wealthy, has put together computers that are now tracking all of the purchases and, and you know transactions w- within Bitcoin to try to decide who's got what money and where it's going and all that sort of thing. In order to, I don't know, build cases or, or whatever it is they're trying to do. Yeah, there's um, there are a couple of really, um, really, or companies filled with really smart guys like Chainalysis, um, and uh, the guy from Wallet Explorer was recently hired by Chainalysis, and their job, um, their entire reason for existing as a company, is to track Bitcoin transactions. Hmm. So, so that sort of tells you like. There's <laughs> there's a gap in the market for for something that uh, that that sort of fills the need for people that don't really want to be um, they, they don't want every single thing they do picked up by companies like Chainalysis. So um, there's other things that sort of uh, I think people so to assume that Bitcoin is somehow the greatest thing ever just as a basically the prototype that came out is to suggest that the model t is the greatest car that was ever created um yeah no, that, that might be true. the analogy is a little shaky but um nonetheless i've got some questions about some things that eh, you know maybe bitcoin could have done better in the, in the first place see if uh, monero has addressed those yeah you can stick with us right ricardo yeah more absolutely ricardo we can go all night. stand by uh more with ricardo spagni here in moments from monero ProPure water filters, making water great again. Taste and feel the difference with state-of-the-art filter technology. Pro1 G2.0 and Pro Max filters are independent lab-tested to NSF standards. Choose from gravity, countertop, pitcher, shower, and inline filtration products. There's a ProPure for you. Buy risk-free today. Visit your authorized ProPure dealer for details or ProPureUSA.com. That's P-R-O-P-U-R-U-S-A.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. The Free State Project has reached its goal of 20,000 liberty lovers who've pledged to move to New Hampshire and get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. Perhaps you're trying to figure out what part of New Hampshire should be your destination. If so, consider Keene. You'll find more than 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeene.com. Keene is famous for its historic, publicity-generating activism, as well as being the liberty media capital of the world. It's home to freekeene.com, New Hampshire's destination for liberty activism, news, and opinion. For years, we've been compiling over 150 reasons to move to Keene at move.freekeene.com where you'll learn about some of what's happening here and what makes Keene a great place to live. If you love liberty, you'll probably enjoy anywhere you end up in the Shire. But do your due diligence first. Please visit move.freekeene.com for the full list of over 150 reasons to move to Keene. That's move.freekeene.com. This is your Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Friday, gold is $9 higher at $1,325 per ounce. And silver is 36 cents higher at $19.31 per ounce. Bitcoin is currently trading at 575 US dollars. If you've thought about buying gold or silver, but didn't know how or what to buy, we can help. Call Roberts and Roberts Brokerage today at 800 874 9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. 
This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers, and some people will try dirty tricks to silence your voice. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, you cannot tolerate any tomfoolery. So go with agoristhosting.com. And if you want to get your foot in the door with decentralized marketplaces, Agorist Hosting is now offering open bazaar hosting. Go to agoristhosting.com. Click on the button that says Get Hosted. Agorist Hosting. That's A-G-O-R-I-S-T hosting.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course you can join us here and take control of the airwaves, bring up whatever's on your mind. Although questions right now, uh, any calls should be related to Monero. We've got Ricardo Spagni on the line with us here. He's one of the head developers for Monero, which is another cryptocurrency, but not like the others, apparently. Most of the other cryptocurrencies out there have been based off of Bitcoin, which is the granddaddy of all of these uh, cryptos, still has the lion's share of uh, the market value with a market cap now in Bitcoin of 9.6 billion U.S. dollars. Yeah, looking so, at CoinCap.io. That's correct, yep. And they, the way they get that market cap is they multiply the price per Bitcoin in U.S. dollars times the available supply, how many Bitcoins there are out there, and that's how they get that uh, that number. The Monero market cap, it's ranking at number five under Ethereum, Ripple, and Litecoin. Uh, Monero is at 177.6 million dollars worth of uh of monero so this is a new anonymous currency or as anonymous as it can be according to ricardo it is of course open source so anybody that's got the programming chops and wants to go and actually look through the code uh can do that uh, i'm excited about cryptocurrencies we've been paying attention to bitcoin for a long time here on free talk live but if you're brand new you you know as he pointed out Monero is for people who want to definitely have their privacy protected. And, Mark, I know you've got some questions for him about maybe some differences here. Uh, but he didn't recommend getting out of Bitcoin. And so if you're ready to get into Bitcoin, then go to Bitcoin.com because that is where you can learn pretty much everything you need to know to get started in Bitcoin. You can learn how to choose a Bitcoin wallet, uh, like Jax, for instance, which is one we recommend. You can get help buying Bitcoins. How do you get, how do you get Bitcoins? Well, Bitcoin.com can answer that question. You can find places to spend your Bitcoin, engage with the community on the Bitcoin forum, and even play online games with the cryptocurrency. It's the source for all of your Bitcoin needs and news. It's Bitcoin.com. We've got Ricardo back on with us here from South Africa. Uh, Mark, go ahead and uh, shoot out whatever question you had for us. Yeah, so um, Bitcoin's got these, uh, we've, we've pointed out that uh, Bitcoin's got the public ledger, whereas Monero has a private ledger. Bitcoin has these 10-minute transactions. How long are Monero's? He said a couple minutes. Two minutes? Uh, yeah, two minutes, yeah. Okay. Um, also, when uh, you know, when looking at Bitcoin, uh, there can be uh, situations that uh, you know these. I I, get, I, I presume that these uh, investigators that were doing the dark web stuff were, um, you know, looking at uh, transactions that were going on in these online dark web, uh, uh, you know, uh, marketplaces. Did you know th that would be eliminated with Monero, right? Yeah, they they wouldn't be able to f to track the flow of transactions. It doesn't stop them from doing good old fashioned police work, and uh, you know I think uh, uh, the, for the most part, uh, people that are doing things that are um, both morally objectionable and illegal will slip up at some point, and they'll be caught out by things that have got nothing to do with the payment mechanism they're using. Yeah, I mean, it could just be going to the post office and shipping a bunch of packages that sets off, yeah. uh, you know, uh, an investigation, a package accidentally gets opened, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there's th there are different ways that people on darknet markets have been caught. Um, most of them don't have to do with the 
uh, with the crypto. What um, what other things does Monero do? What what sort of upgrades? I mean, surely you were looking at Bitcoin. What sort of upgrades did uh, you make when you created Monero? He did not create Monero. Well, right? I'm sorry. Um, when when yeah. Monero, <laughs> what are the things that Come attracted on, you? Attracted you uh, to Monero? I keep on thinking he did. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, there are a bunch of things where um, we've looked at it and we've gone, can we do things differently? Uh, that's not to say, can we do things better? Um, you know, there are a lot of decisions that were made in Bitcoin that were um, that that a lot of people look at and go, oh, what a stupid decision. But over time it plays out and you go, oh, that's actually a really clever idea or that was a really good decision at the beginning. So where Monero has chosen to do something differently, it doesn't doesn't necessarily mean, oh, wow, it's magically better. It just means it's a different engineering decision. Maybe it works out. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, I mean, like one of the things, for example, is that we have a dynamic block size limit. And what that basically means is that um, the the amount of data that you can pack in or the number of transactions you can pack in um, per second into the blockchain is able to grow over time dependent on demand um, and use. So so that's sort of something that is, uh, that's never really been done. This is like, I mean, Monero really embodies the first uh, popular cryptocurrency in use that has something like that. So it's exciting and it's, it's, it's cool and it's amazing and Hopefully it doesn't explode, and it hasn't exploded so far. So you know, let's hope for the future. There's um, one of the reasons that uh, people are involved in Bitcoin mining is is that they help with the transactions, and they get a transaction fee, um, or they have the opportunity to uh, you know find a block, as it were, and uh, make make a whole bunch of money. Um, I know that Monero is, I guess it's uh, you know they're going to have these uh, block rewards going on forever, right? Yeah, so that's that's another difference. There is um, Bitcoin is typically described as uh, as being deflationary because yeah. there's a fixed amount, and in some ways that it's kind of like gold because there's a limited amount of gold. If we assume that we're never going to find gold in asteroids and that sort of thing, um, Monero is more like cash because there's um, there's not a finite supply, and there's a point where instead of it. Um, instead of it being deflationary like Bitcoin, it's slightly inflationary and it starts at about 0.8% inflation per year and decreases over time. So it sort of approaches zero, um, which which the technical term is it's slightly disinflationary. So it's, it's not inflationary enough um, to really affect anyone's holdings or, or anything like that. But it definitely does, um, it, it lends itself more towards something that needs to be used and not something that needs to be shoved in a, a, yeah, shoved in a safe somewhere. I mean, you can. You can hold on and sure, maybe if the market appreciates in value, it's going to be worth more. But Monero is far more useful if it's used than if it's shoved in a safe. One of the uh, sort of things we found about Bitcoin over time is is that the uh, you know the miners make the decision as to what direction the uh, currency goes ultimately with Bitcoin, um, and the what a lot of people have been wanting is larger block sizes with Bitcoin. What that means is is there that you're able to record more transactions in a ten minute period. And it's caused some problems. Um, I mean, I remember you used to send Bitcoin transactions. You'd have no transaction fee at all. Um, you know, now if you're not uh, throwing in 60 cents or something, you're worth a Bitcoin. You're you're not going to get your transaction on the ledger. Now, not to say that things should be free. I'm just saying that there would be some advantages to larger block sizes, um, and that can't get implemented because the miners won't do it. What, how would how has Monero addressed that uh, situation, or have you? Or have they? Yes. So that's that uh, dynamic block limit we spoke about um, addresses that, and provides a um, an alternative to the the fixed block limit. Uh, and again, it's not to say that one mechanism is better than the other. And there's a lot of debate about um, about this at the moment. Um, and and I think that uh, I think that the larger issue here is that for Bitcoin to change its block size or its block limit would require something called a hard fork, yeah. which requires 
every single participant in the network to simultaneously adopt these changes. And as we saw with so, the Ethereum hard fork that happened this year, yeah. Uh, that actually left us with two ethers, two different ether currencies. One is now called Ether Ethereum or Ether Classic, and the other one is uh, is just Ether. So now we've got two, which it adds to the confusion. I mean, it's it would be very very hard to get any kind of mass adoption of a concept where there's more than one of the exact same name. I mean, uh, well, I mean, that's I guess we have Coke and Diet Coke, but <laughs> nonetheless, <laughs> at least at this well, point in the game. I mean it becomes worse because you've got to have two separate like marketplaces and yeah. you've got people trading both so you've almost suddenly duplicated your coin supply that's basically what happened with the ether split yeah. and what i'm really asking yeah. here is is that do the miners still control and um if so i mean that seems cumbersome in some ways well hold that thought yeah. uh, ricardo we're going to come back with another segment with you and also your calls are welcome at 855 450 free ricardo spagni is here with us from monero I'm Governor Gary Johnson. Like 60% of you, I'm not impressed by the two-party system. It's a dinosaur. It's outmoded and no longer reflects today's America. Two-party politics doesn't work, and it hasn't worked for anybody but itself in decades. If we the people are wise, we will never again elect another president from within the entrenched, corrupt, co-opted two-party system. The office of president should serve the needs of everyone equally with respect and with fairness. I did it as governor, I'll do it as president. Google me. 60% of you have said you want another choice in 2016, and now you have one in me. We the people have a chance to do something in 2016 that may not come around again in our lifetimes. We have a legitimate chance to elect one of our own to the highest office in the land. Give me your vote one time and see what a difference one election can make. Our best America yet. Johnson Weld, 2016. Paid for by Gary Johnson, 2016. Attention small business owners. Want to save money on your employee health insurance plan? Learn the little-known solution that could save thousands of dollars on your health insurance benefits and save your employees money, too. Call Health Markets for a free consultation, and one of our 3,000 local agents will show you how to make health care reform work for you. We'll design customized solutions for your business that can lower health care costs for you and your employees. We'll work directly with you to determine your needs. We search thousands of health plans from over 180 health insurance companies nationwide. You'll also find out if tax credits could save you money. Best of all, the service is free of charge. See why Health Markets has enrolled Americans in more than 2 million insurance policies. You don't have to wait for open enrollment to lower your cost. Call now. Find out how much you and your employees could be saving. Representatives are standing by to assist you. Call 800-930-5137. That's 800-930-5137. 800-930-5137. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Work with your doctor when taking medications. Make Protovite part of your healthy lifestyle. Healthforliberty.com is your source for Protovite, a powerful nutritional supplement that's a true breakthrough for your health. Poor digestion makes it nearly impossible to absorb the nutrition your body needs. Protovite is a liquid multi-nutrient formula with patent-pending absorption technology and the highest quality ingredients to nourish every cell in your body. My name is Sandra White. Six weeks ago when I started taking Protovite, I was on 14 medications from everything for blood pressure to fibromyalgia. In the first 10 days, my blood sugar dropped 50 points and my fibromyalgia pain is gone. And so was 12 of the 14 medications that I was taking. I'm 66, living life and loving it. Go to healthforliberty.com right now. That's healthforliberty.com. Thank you, Protovite, for giving my life back. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT no government license. 
The Bipcot NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to Bipcot.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Welcome to the live Sunday edition of the program. Yeah, I want to make sure we don't get too far into the weeds of uh, of Monero because it's easy for us who are really interested in cryptocurrencies to kind of start going there. And getting into a discussion about block size, I think, starts to go into those weeds. Block size is a debate that has, has been happening in the Bitcoin community for a couple few years now, and they've yet to really make up their minds about it. But ultimately, what it has to do with is how many transactions per, what is it, minute or, or second or something like that, that, uh, that the system can basically handle. Uh-huh. Um, and so, you know, that was part of your question about uh, one of some of the differences between Monero, this new mostly anonymous uh, currency, or as anonymous as it can be, is what uh, head developer Ricardo Spagni was telling us here, uh, that you know, your question was about uh, my, what, my what, what are the level that the miners, ha- what kind right. of influence the miners have in Monero as opposed right. to Bitcoin? So there's a difference in cryptocurrencies between uh, proof of work and proof of uh, share. Um, and that what that means is, is that either the possessors of the currency make the decisions or the creators, the miners of the currency make the decisions. What we've seen with Bitcoin is, is that um, the miners generally make the decision not to make a decision. Mm-hmm. Now, that means that, that it's difficult for Bitcoin to evolve into something better, because it could. It just won't. And what I'm wondering is, you know, if I was redesigning a cryptocurrency, I might, you know, design based on that concern. Ricardo? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a valid concern. I think the, the flip side to that is... When it comes to proof of stake versus proof of work versus proof of all sorts of other things that people have made up in their basement, uh, cryptography is really hard and um, game theory and incentives are even harder. So um, proof of work is kind of like a known good system. It's secured by electrons in the universe. We know that we can trust it because there are a bunch of... um, of academics and researchers that have have covered this over the past six and a half years. And there, there's a lot of practical uh, evidence for proof of work being safe. Um, Proof of stake is not backed up by any sort of uh, rationale that um, academics can agree is safe. So the difference between these things uh, for listeners that are new to the concepts, proof of work is about how these things are mined, meaning that uh, there's you know, people cranking away on uh, these computers or cranking away on cryptographic uh, problems, basically. They're, these things are being solved or attempted to be solved, and that's what helps keep the, the system secure. It, it proves that they are working to continue on this system, and they're rewarded for that with the uh, the mining rewards that, that come out, basically, as I understand it. Uh, whereas proof yeah. of stake just says, oh, I'm holding this amount of this currency, so therefore I have a stake in it, and there's no real actual work that those people are putting in. Is that is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. So basically the simplest way to think about it is, do you want the cryptographic security of your money secured by a bunch of computers burning electricity, and so an attacker needs to burn the same amount of electricity? Or do you want it secured by... Well, my bank decides, like you know, what my money does, and well, and I think <laughs> yeah, I don't I want that. History, time, hist- history dis- has shown us that that's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, nobody's using cryptocurrencies because they trust their bank. They're going well, you know. I might love my bank very much, and they're great, but I'm using cryptocurrencies because I want an alternative. Yeah. And, and so to go back to a, a state or to regress to a state where we're trusting the largest holders of a currency to make good decisions just seems futile. Okay. So, is, uh, so then Monero is a proof-of-work currency then. Is that right? Yeah. Proof-of-work 
very similar to Bitcoin. We have a different proof of work algorithm, but other than that, we're talking about roughly the same mechanism. Now, um, back in the day and still today, uh, Bitcoin, for the people that I know who've tried to mine Bitcoin, has never really worked out for them. The cost of the equipment is very rarely recouped unless somebody has free electricity, which you know many of us don't have. Uh, it's fairly hard to find that unless you've got some sort of deal with an apartment building or something like that. You live on a river. <laughs> um, but so you know, it, it has been generally a failure of people trying to uh, return, get a return on their investment for uh, for mining, unless they have some huge mining farm out in China where the electricity is is very very cheap. On uh, the uh, you know, it's a, a colder portion of China, so it's easier to kind of air condition the. Uh, the areas where the computers are cranking away on this uh, this Bitcoin mining. I've heard that Monero you can mine with just a, a web browser. So uh, is uh, is Monero ever going to get to the point where you have to have some super fancy rig, uh, a very expensive uh, computer to uh, to participate in mining, or will it always be open to somebody with you know just a a, a laptop and a, a web browser? So the the Monero proof of work algorithm is kind of interesting because. We, we tend to describe it as egalitarian. Uh, it, um, it, 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 it tends to encourage anyone to mine, even if you've just got your laptop or your phone or whatever. Mm. The, the thing is, like, obviously some dude in China who has dirt cheap uh, electricity and has access to equipment that's, like, significantly cheaper than you is going to be able to mine at a faster rate. Mm. But if you consider, like... You know, let's say there are 100, 150,000 people around the world who have like entry level computers and they're all mining at their entry level speed. That guy in China that has like 100 uh, fancy GPU mining rigs, he's not really going to be able to compete no. because he's competing against so many other people. It's so, like a ninja so this, against uh, an, ant, the whole an army of ants. The idea of having a more accessible proof of work algorithm. Maybe it plays out to um, to a more balanced um, and less clustered mining environment. Yeah, perhaps so. We did just get a uh, an interruption there from our Skype, so uh, we've we've technically we tep temporarily lost uh, the call, but I think uh, Ricardo is back with us now. So what it sounds like you're saying is one of the the other key differences and another connection problem. Anyway, it sounds like what he's saying. One of the key differences between Bitcoin and Monero is that mining is within the reach of anybody. Whereas over time, Bitcoin has it's become more difficult and more fancy equipment was necessary to mine Bitcoin, thereby cutting uh, the average person out of the ability to do that, which mining is a very important part part of the the whole process of having a, a cryptocurrency. So I got to say, I'm intrigued by Monero. Um, I you know same here. I, I know I can tell Roger Veer has been uh, paying a little attention to it too. Yeah, and but of course it's not the only player out there. Uh, any comment quickly, Ricardo? I think we've got you back. Well, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was going to ask him about uh, you know some of the al alternatives out there. There is Dash. We talked to the people from Dash. I know uh, they have master nodes, and which sounds like a, a level of centralization. Yeah, and master so sounds bad. Some people are concerned that the master nodes could be taken over by governments or something. Um, on the other hand, the master nodes apparently allow the transactions to confirm much, much faster. Um, and then, of course, there's the upcoming Zcash, which is going to be coming out within the next couple of months, as I understand it. And a lot of people are excited about that as well. So by no means is Monero the only entry uh, into the marketplace of anonymous currency. But it's the but exciting one right now. Right now, it's the one that seems to be taking off. Uh, I hope that they can wrap up the development on some sort of easy-to-use GUI. I have had some success now with the web wallet. Uh, which is called Get, or excuse me, it's so the official website, getmonero.org. The web wallet that they recommend at getmonero.org is mymonero.com. You've got to be careful with, with which wallets you use, because if you're using a wallet that, you know, is, is being created by somebody who's questionable, yeah. then they might just be preparing to steal your Bitcoin, like happened to us, or your Monero in this, in this case, like happened to us years ago, Mark. We had this we My had Bitcoin Bitcoin. Wallet to com, dot com. Was that what it was? Yeah. Uh, we had a Bitcoin wallet online that we had stored some Bitcoin in, and uh, either he raided it for, for himself or somebody actually broke it really in looks and, like that. And, uh, and stole it. But either way, uh, Ricardo, any uh, thoughts 
since we may have you just for a few seconds here on some of the alternatives, Dash or the upcoming Zcash for other anonymous currencies. And, of course, he's disconnected. Oh, well, I tried to ask. I tried to get the, the question answered. I think the uh, the Internet has broken down between here and South Africa at the at the moment. Yeah, I've, I must say I'm um, somewhat excited about Monero, and I, I haven't been really excited about another cryptocurrency since Bitcoin. I'm not predicting the demise of Bitcoin, but we have always said on Free Talk Live that at some point it is likely that some currency will come along that will be better. Now, maybe that's Monero. We're still in the very early oh, phases. Yeah. This is highly speculative stuff. Absolutely. Don't invest what you can't afford to lose, obviously. But I uh, fully agree. Yes. Ah, you're back. Well, you've got enough time to say uh, good night to <laughs> to our audience. Thank you for being here, Ricardo Spagni, uh, from getmonero.org. Any other final thoughts? Go ahead and get them out fast. Yeah, th thanks very much for having me, guys. And pretty much just to, to everyone that uh, that is interested, please feel free to get in touch with us and to visit the website, chat to the community, get involved. But, yeah, ultimately don't invest more than you're willing to lose. This is not an investment. It's not a company. It's a currency. Use it or lose it. Very good. Great uh, time talking to you tonight, tonight. Really appreciate it. And thank you. Ricardo Spagni from GetMonero.org. We'll continue with more Free Talk Live, Hour 2, coming up. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, September 4th, 2016. Silver is trading at $19.58 per ounce. Gold is valued at 